saved my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So be it. Is that better? All right. <laughs> well, here we are again. <laughs> um, first thing, we want to start with prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for this opportunity to be in front of my church family and give the message this morning. Please help me with my words and help me not to say anything wrong that offends anybody, but I hope there will be things that people can take to their hearts and just really know what kind of a life there is to lead with you and you in our life. So just be with us, Lord, as we go through this sermon and have a great day going home and be careful going home this afternoon after the service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So somebody asked me this morning, how do you figure out what you're going to talk about? Well, it's a process. And there go my hands shaking. Dog, oh, got it. I'm not really nervous, it's just my hands are. <laughs> so I think about it and I pray about it, and all of a sudden something will come to mind. And when the first time I ever got up and gave the message, it was in 2016, I can't believe it's been five year, four years already. But anyway, um, we were down quilting, and Sherry kept looking at me in the weirdest way, and I thought, what do you want, what do you want, you know? And then she started talking about they needed a female to give the message for that Sunday. And I said, why are you looking at me? And she says, what do you think? I said, I can't do that. I'm not smart enough to do that. So we talked on and off and on and off. And as we were both going out the door, and I said, I don't know what I'm going to talk about, Sherry. It's only four days away. I walked out, and I got in my car, which happened to be parked right in front of the cross out there, and the message on the bottom of the cross to know God and make him known to others. Just hit me right in the face. I jumped out of my car and I said, Jerry, I know what I'm going to talk about. So it just happens. And this week, I kind of procrastinated and let it go to the last minute, so that's my fault. But I came up with words. Words are everywhere. Words are, they can harm, they can help, they can infuriate, they can teach, just to name a few. They can also encourage. And that helps a lot if somebody's in their darkest hours, sometimes just to talk to someone is an encouragement for them to do what they need to do and make it through the night. When we last talked last time from James 3, we learned that the smallest organ can, be, can do a lot of damage and it is the hardest to control, and that is your tongue. I'm a big advocate of having a, watching my tongue all the time, and I know when I say something wrong, it's just like, oh, forgive me, Lord, I'm so sorry. It's so I'm sure everybody goes through that. In the beginning, words were scribed on stone, scrolls, paper, and now everything is on an oblong screen. Meaning of several words have changed over the years. There's one that comes to mind that I have to remind, remind Merle of often, and uh, it's thong. <laughs> years ago, our flip-flops were called thongs. And people being of the old school go out in public and start talking about thongs. And I said, honey, that doesn't mean the same anymore. <laughs> it does not. The most beautiful and meaningful words are right here in this book, the Bible. I've heard it called a love story, a story of his wondrous love for his people throughout the ages. Some words are not fun, but all put together, it is the true meaning of life. If one can't follow the rules to the best of their ability, there are consequences. I believe our Lord has been most patient for us, for all he has been through for all this time. 
In Mark 31, 13, 31, Jesus said, heaven and, earth, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. In Acts 20, 24, it says, however I consider my life nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete that the Lord has given me, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Some of you may say, what task do I have? That is yours to find out. Have faith, and the Holy Spirit will guide you toward the goal. Other pay people may see what your task is, but you have to be comfortable with, with what you believe. Mostly, don't be afraid. You will not be given more than you can handle. This is all such a mystery of how this, how, all, how this all works, but all the answers are in the Bible. Just study and read along with us. It takes time to be comfortable in this new skin and soul. It is possible, what is possible is greater than the past. And now we're going to kind of get into the reading for our last week, which was Acts 17 through 21, 23, wherever you went with that. And this is about Paul. And when they came to Thessalonica, Thess Thessalonica, there was a Jewish synagogue. And was his custom, Paul went into the synagogue, and on three Sabbath days, he reasoned with them from the scriptures. Now, when it says on three Sabbath days, I would, don't know if that means three Sabbath days a week apart, one each day. I don't understand exactly that. I'll have to look that up a little better. He reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and proving that the Messiah had to suffer and rise from the dead. This Jesus I am proclaiming to you is the Messiah. Some of the Jews were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a large number of God-fearing Greeks and a quite a few prominent men and women. And as you know from reading th through the scriptures today, Paul went on one big trip. I mean, he, he went through a lot on that trip. He got beat, he's thrown in jail, and then he's back out. And I think at one point he was blind for a little while. And wow, he's one tough guy. But other Jews were jealous, so they rounded up some bad characters from the marketplace, formed a mar mob, and started a riot in the city. They rushed to Jason's house in search of Paul and Silas in order to bring them out to the crowd. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some other believers before the city officials, shouting, These men have caused trouble all over the world and have now come here, and Jason has welcomed them into his house. They all... They are all defying Caesar's decree, saying that there is another king, one called Jesus. When they heard this, the crowd and the city officials were turned in, thrown into turmoil. Then they made Jason and the others post bond and let them go. So way back then, they still had to post bond to get out of jail. That's amazing. As soon as it was, as it was night, the believers sent Paul and Silas to Berea. I have to look at Bob because I asked him for the pronunciations <laughs> before I started. On their arrival, they went to the Jewish synagogue once again. Now, the Berean Jews were more noble character than those in Thessalonica, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if Paul said what Paul said was true. As a result, many of them believed, as did, as did also a number of prominent Greek men and women. But when the Jews in Thess Thessalonica, that, that T word, learned that Paul was preaching the word of God at Berea. Some of them went there too, agitating the crowds and stirring them up. Paul then moved on to Athens and was very stressed to see the city was full of idols. So, reasoned, so he reasoned in the synagogue with both Jews and the God-fearing Greeks, as well as in the marketplace, day by day with those who happened to be there. Some of them asked, what is this blabber saying? He seems to be advocating, advocating foreign gods. Paul stood in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious, for I walked around and looked carefully at your projects of worship. I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. So you are igno ignorant of the very thing you worship. We are to tell others about Jesus and the joy that we have inside. Some will laugh and some will not. Who knows? Maybe some will believe and even become lights known to us as lights in our life. Isn't it a shame how the devil can so easily distract us from our mission of loving, living, and telling others about Jesus 
by being divided by leaders, music styles, programs, even the color of the carpets or the pews. What a shame. We are the church. You and I are the body of Christ to love and minister to a lost world about <coughs> salvation and reconciliation to God through Jesus. How can we do that if we are divided as a church instead of united as a church? Are we united? Are we the hands and feet of Jesus? If we aren't in any way, then we need to correct our ways and follow the way of Jesus. Many profess the way, but don't walk the way. I wonder if they know the truth, and do they really have eternal life? I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of the Lord Jesus, that all of you agreed with one another in what you say, and that you, there will be no divisions between you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. In 1 Corinthians 1.18, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are, beginning, are being saved, it is the power of God. That God loved me so much that he would give up his son's life to save mine. How can I keep that quiet? While Apollos was teaching the church at Corinth to grow to maturity, Paul went on to a town called Ephesus, right? Paul asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? My question is to you, have you believed? Have you received the Holy Spirit? Does he dwell in you, moving you towards maturity in Christ? We only have one life to live, and are you living it for Jesus and the message of the cross? Living for anything else would really be foolish. First Corinthians, no, that's first Acts 19:4, right? Kim? Paul says John's baptism to believe but, wait a minute, let me start this over. Paul says John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, that is Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. You and I received the Holy Spirit when we believed. The Spirit of God himself, by where we can call out, Abba, Father. Paul wrote, let me see, where am I at here? Did I miss something? I don't think so. Okay, um, Paul wrote Timothy, Second Timothy. Paul wrote to Timothy, 2 Timothy 1, 7 through 14. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and discipline. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about the Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join me within me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He has saved us any call and called us to a holy life, not to be wise about anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior. Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald, an apostle, and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause for shame, because I know whom I have believed, and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to keep him until that day. What you heard from me, keep as the pattern of sounding, sound teaching with faith and love in Jesus Christ. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. <clears throat> Are you holding on to these sound teachings? Are you living your life according to God's will by power of God's Spirit? What will Jesus have to tell you about your life on that day? Paul lived his life for Jesus. He considered the things that he used to desire and envy as garbage. He threw it all away to know Jesus and to make known to others that they might be saved and become followers of Jesus in his way also. As you read on in Acts this past week, Paul's faith and the spirit take him back to Jerusalem. But the Jews continued to reject Paul. Really, they are rejecting Jesus and they plotted to kill him. Reading on in Acts, I see God moving, Jesus building his church, and the power of the Holy Spirit living in and through the church, you and me, and I see people being saved. 
Later, while Paul was in prison, he wrote a letter to the church in Ephesus. This is the letter that he wrote. It appears in Ephesians 1, 3 through 14. Let us give thanks to the Lord and God. Let us give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For in our union with Christ, he has blessed us by giving us every spiritual blessing in the heavenly world. Even before the world was made, God had already chosen us to be his through our union with Christ, so that we would be holy and without fault before him. Because of his love, God had already decided that through Jesus Christ, he would make us his children. This was his pleasure and purpose. Let us praise God for the glorious grace, for the free gift he gave us in his dear soul. For the blood of Christ, we are set free. That is, our sins are forgiven. How great is the grace of God, which he gave to us in such large measure. In all his wisdom and insight, God did what he had purposed and made known to us the secret plan he had already decided to complete by the means of Christ. This plan, which God will complete when time is right, is to bring all creation together, everything in heaven and on earth, with Christ as the head. All things are done according to God's plan and decision, and God chose us to be his own people in union with Christ because of his own purpose, based on what he had decided from the very beginning. Let us then, who were in the first to hope in Christ, praise God's glory. And you also became God's people when you heard the true message, the good news that brought you salvation. You believed in Christ, and God put his stamp of ownership on you by giving you the Holy Spirit he had promised. The Spirit is a guarantee that we shall believe, receive what God has promised his people. And this assures us that God will give complete freedom to those are his, who are his. Let us praise his glory. Now I'm missing something here, so I've got to see where it is. Just a second. Be patient. So the, the reading for this week wasn't all that, um, I didn't touch on that clear through the whole thing because I had the words thing that I wanted to kind of go over with everybody. And um, words just can be very, very, very good. They can be very, very hurtful. And it's hard to think about those things when you're getting angry and you want to sit, tell somebody off or something like that. But it's just, it's life. It's life. There was, I'm sorry, I must have misplaced one of the things I wanted to read to you. Anyway, I guess I left it home, or whatever. So, words, 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 words. The girls are going to get up and sing for us in a minute, and again, that's more words. And just everything is words. And they're just, like I said, they're the beautiful, wonderful words that are in the Bible. And the more we read and study, the more we get out of this. And it's just a blessing to me to be up here and be able to speak in front of everybody. And it's kind of short today. I didn't mean it to be that way, Mike, but that's the way it goes. So let's have a little bit of prayer just before the girls get up and sing and then give them all the support we can give them because they do an awesome job. Holy Father, thank you so much for this time to be in front of my, pe my church people. Thank you for the, the words that we said and I hope some of those words touched somebody in some way. Just be with us, Lord, as we travel home today and be with the people traveling home from the walk. And just, Jesus, we bless you and praise you for the blessings that you have given us already and the blessings that are yet to come. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Here comes our little songbirds. What's the biggest word you left out today? Huh? The biggest word you left out What do you mean the biggest word I left out? I love. Love. Oh, love. Oh, yeah. Well, that's one of the words. That's one of the words. <laughs> 